Good afternoon, or even good evening, depending on where you're in the world you're watching right now. My name is Barry Sullivan. I look after admissions in the Carter School of Engineering. And with me today, we have Dr. Peter Cleal from the Institute of Environment and Sustainability from the Carter School of Engineering. Uh, Dr. Cleal used to be the, uh, sort of the course leader and course champion for the MSc in Bioenvironmental Engineering. Uh, he's currently a senior lecturer in the School of Engineering. And we'll be talking with him now about the course, uh, the aims of the course, and uh, answering some of the questions that we've had submitted from some of the offer holders out there today. So, uh, Dr. Cleo, thank you for joining us today. Um, sure. I wonder if you could give us a bit of background as to um, how how long you've been involved with this course, and sort of what the aims of the course were when it was developed and, and where it is today. Well, I, I guess the, the aims of the course really is to, is to bring together um, a range of distant, different areas from s civil engineering, environmental engineering, um, earth sciences, uh, life sciences, to really to, to try and provide a, a higher, higher degree, which um, really pro provides a, a education in this quite, quite a, a full, full, forward-looking uh, area, really. So the, the, the course has been running for about um, uh, 10 Ten uh, years or so, but it's obviously uh, changed uh, during 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 that time. And um, we've we've had quite a lot of uh, involvement with the uh, industry um, in terms of the uh, design of the course, um, and also that we have people come in in from industry to actually teach on the course uh, as well. I wonder. Well, while we're on that point, I usually don't bring it up until later in the conversation. But you mentioned industry um, involvement. Can you give give us some examples of? what types of industry or specific names of, of companies or agencies that have been involved in the development of the course and, and, and teaching and delivering it now? Sure, yeah, well, I mean, we have a, a range of people that uh, teach on the course. They're, they're from uh, various companies uh, uh, in the industry. And, and they, they, we, we also um, uh, bring in people from uh, research uh, agent agencies as, 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 as well. Um, so we've got um, someone that, that uh, teaches on the, on the course from Jacobs uh, Engineering, um, another expert from uh, Card uh, Geotechnics as well. Um, so so they, they um, come in and, and uh, deliver bespoke courses to the, uh, uh, the students, um, provide uh, design uh, ch challenges for them really, that, that the students then go, go, go away, come up, up with um, uh, answers to the uh, pro pro problems that are, that are um, posed to them, um, and then give them feedback on those, um, and sort of uh, effect effectively ask the students to tackle the problem as they would uh, out in in uh, actual pra practice. Is that sort of for their their dissertation and the project stage of the course that you're referring to? No, no. So the, those um, courses are, are delivered in the first part of the, of the course. So the the, the the structure of the course is in two two main main um, parts. There's a there's a um, a talk component, um, which is you know of course consists of normal kind of lectures, uh, design courses, and the, and these short 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 courses uh, as well. Um, and then the students then then go on to the second stage of the course, which is the um, Research project in the you know in the summer months. Okay, um, if we go back a little bit, um, what types of students do we normally attract to this course in terms of their academic or professional background? What does a student, what knowledge base does a student need to succeed on this uh, MSc? Well, uh, although we're a school of engineering, the the the, um, the background of our students is quite is quite broad, to be honest. I mean, we we've had students from obviously from from engineering backgrounds, but also from um, earth sciences, biosciences. Um, so so really, uh, we've had people from a, a maths background as well. So so really, as long as you've you've got a first degree, which is um, a kind of a numerate degree, then then you then you then you should be okay. Um, we normally look for a, a two-one or equivalent um, if it's a, a first degree, um, but but of course if if people have been out in industry in practice, then we obviously take that into account as 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 well. And I know that um, you know it's been a few years since you've had a, a leading role on this course, and um, I guess a good number of our students come from overseas, so it might be. 
difficult to keep in touch with them after they leave, but could you give us some examples of what types of industry uh, or jobs uh, that our students would go into following the degree? Sure. Well, there's there's kind of probably there's there's two main main places that people go to. Either they either they stay in academia and go on to do a, a PhD, um, and we've had quite a few students take take that um, uh, uh, that uh, particular route because this this particular area is is a fairly uh, intensive uh, area for uh, research challenges. Um, but the second the second route, which is probably the most common, is is for is for for, for people to go into into industry, and uh, we have graduates now in in many of the leading consultancy, so Arabs, Jacobs, URS, RPS. So there's, we've got uh, quite a nice uh, group of people um, across the the UK and and further further uh, afield uh, in the in this particular area. And a, n a number of those uh, big firms you mentioned uh, are conveniently located right here in Cardiff too, aren't they? So yes, yeah, yeah. So we've we've got graduates that work here. Um, Quite a lot of our graduates have uh, gone in, gone into jobs which have been uh, either in Cardiff or a Bristol area, the, the local area. But then they they then move on from there and they're, and they're sort of spread fairly 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 widely, to be honest. Okay. Um, now I know you're you're leading a researcher in this area, but um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with other similar courses in the UK. Um, but what if you are familiar with any of the other similar courses in the UK? What would you think sets Cardiff Apart for the geoenvironmental group, well, there aren't that many courses which are, which are, uh, provide the kind of thing that that we're providing here in, in ter terms of the uh, the uh, coverage across the uh, different different areas. Um, and also, whilst we are in a, um, a school of en uh, a school of en engineering, we we do look to try and um, bring in the uh, experts from from the other areas. So um, our our students will. We'll spend some time in, in Earth sci sci science sciences, um, looking at, um, at their at their particular uh, problems, and then then of course as as we mentioned already, we we also bring in the people from industry to really sort of focus in um, the core skills that, that the students learn in in the first part of the course to really then look at how how they can be um, applied to our actual real real work problems in the industry. Okay. Um, one of the things that I, when I speak about all of the MSCs that we offer um, at Cardiff, I think one of the things that makes us stronger is that we have very small cohorts of students, um, which allows for more time with supervisors and access to academics, um, and maybe a better chance to form a good bond with the, the group of students that uh, you're working with. Now, the GEO uh, MSC, obviously, so specialized and so specialist that it's even smaller. What typically? What, what do we have about maybe five to ten students on this MSc? Yeah, the, the numbers I would I would say yeah, typically in that in that kind of range. Probably you know perhaps they they have gone up to maybe fifteen or something like like that. But it, it's certainly a cohort that you that you get to know by name and you you know we, we will know each other fairly well by the end of the end of the course. Um, so that so there's there's a few benefits there that, that the classes are a little smaller. Um, but also when it when it comes to the the uh, project, there's a lot more choice. So there's a, a lot more chance that a student can can choose a project which really really sort of fire, fire, fires them up if you, if you like. Um, they also have the uh, opportunity that that they can come up up with a project. So if there's something that that they're particularly interested in, they can they can uh, come up up with an with an idea, and we can look to to find someone to actually work with them on that on that particular subject. Okay, um, this will probably be my last question, I think. But if if we could imagine for a second that you were um, from industry yourself, uh, and, and I think you probably do have some background in that area. But if you were an employer, I guess, in out in industry, um, and you had an application from a Cardiff graduate in front of you, um, what? Well, I guess what is the reputation of of students from this? Uh, Course, what what would you say? I, I know they're from Cardiff, so they must be good at this. This is their area of strength. What would you say that would be? Well, I, I, th I think probably that the, that we've got that employers would would expect to get good engineering graduates from us. People that can do the maths, 
understand the problems, um, and 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 really actually you know sort of grasp grasp the problem and actually take take it forward in uh, a useful a useful way. And and particularly for for students that are coming in with a, a MSc, then then they would be um, expecting to get someone that was that was well well trained in that particular area that that they could actually get to work quickly um, and uh, and actually uh, employ you know with a, a fair degree of comfort really that that they were going to get a good a good quality graduate. Good. Okay. Well, um, I think that answers most of the questions that we've had and most of the questions that I've had. Is there anything else that you'd care to uh, add to this conversation, Dr. Cleo? No, I think I think we probably covered the, the key points. To be honest, I mean, uh, obviously, uh, if people have got other other questions, they're they're very very welcome to send me an uh, email, um, and 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 I can answer them on a direct basis. That's that's uh, absolutely absolutely fine to do that. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, as you said, we can you can email us here on this address, and if it's a, a technical question that uh, I can't answer because I'm not an engineer, uh, I can certainly talk to Dr. Cleel or one of the other academics or even a, indeed a student who's involved in the course. But for those of you who have now received your final results, uh, if you've just graduated, please don't forget to upload those to your SIMS account so we can confirm you as unconditional. And once that's done, you'll be prompted uh, to confirm your details for your CAS if you are an international student. And once you confirm those details, we will issue you with your CAS so you can apply for your visa. Um, Thank you again for your time, Dr. Cleal. I know you're very busy, um, but it's, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. And uh, anyone who has questions, please do feel free to get in touch with, in touch with us. Thanks again.